Our efforts to communicate with alien civilization continue. To fail. Yeah, well, yes. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to D News. I'm Anthony. I'm Trace. You've heard of SETI, right? The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence? It's this nonprofit organization that was started in 1984, and they are dedicated to sending radio transmissions into space to look for alien life. And also to listen for return transmissions. But you might know them for their more awesome screensaver. You can use it to analyze the radio waves. It also makes your computer run hotter than a toaster. So the other day on our blog, Ian O'Neill wrote about how SETI's been focusing their search lately. They've been using data from the Kepler Space Telescope to find out what exoplanets within range of their radio telescope in West Virginia are the ones that are most likely to support life. And the idea here is that they can point their radio telescope directly at those exoplanets and focus their efforts on places more likely to respond. And that way, you know, they're not looking at the whole sky. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a lot of space. But so they send out these narrowed searches and they got 52 likely replies. So that's 52 narrow band radio signals in the frequency range that they expected. And then after two years of crunching the data, it was interference from Earth radio signals. There was nothing extraterrestrial at all, which I guess is to be expected. SETI is an awesome idea, but when you think about it, it's like the biggest needle in the haystack thing you could possibly <laughs> ever do. And the odds of finding anything, even in a directed search like that, slim to none. I have always wondered why we are looking for radio signals at all. Like why we would expect an alien race, you know, even if they're as advanced or more advanced than we are, to use the, like <laughs> radio. Because this would be a totally different world that evolved in a totally different way. Right. And we are taking a completely Earth-centric view in our search. And that's something that SETI is admitting to themselves now. In they've said it in their findings. But what I've always wondered, in that same vein, what it, what if they can see a different frequency than we can or hear it? Like they come here, we got Wi-Fi flying everywhere and they're like, what the heck is all this stuff <laughs> So we're around? just beaming noise and light pollution to them all the time. It's Constantly. just like, hey jerks, here's a present from Earth. Totally, totally. I mean, I don't know. It feels like SETI might not even be the best way to search for life. Even if the screensaver does make my computer look like a Starship bridge computer. <laughs> How would you guys change the way we search for life? Let us know what you think. Check out Ian's story on the Discovery News website or rent Charlie Sheen's The Arrival for more details about SETI. And subscribe for D News. The aliens, their legs bend backwards. Like big flamingos. Like giant alien like flamingos. Like evil flamingos.